Hello! Today I wanted to do a video on how my backyard has kind of transformed over the years. I did a majority of my backyard work uh, plantings on my own or with help from some friends and so it's taken me a while <laughs> to get the backyard to be kind of what I want it to be and I thought it would be fun to share with you kind of how it's transformed over the years kind of the baby steps that were taken to get everything to look like it does now and maybe to inspire you to maybe plant some roses or do some plantings on your own and really transform your own backyard. So I actually bought my house and the backyard obviously came with it um, about 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago in 2014. And I have done a lot of work in the backyard over those 10 years. But like I said, they're just kind of little baby steps. So in the moment, it doesn't feel like a ton of work. But over 10 years, I think it really adds up. And I think the work shows and um, it really paid off. And I do love my backyard. I love that it's unique to me. And I love that I had such a big hand and play in kind of shaping it, forming it, and taking care of it. So back, back when I was looking for houses, um, this particular house did stand out and it really actually wasn't the house. I really liked the potential of the backyard. So at the time, there was nothing in the backyard except a mature citrus tree. And then the owner who was trying to sell it, he kind of mowed the, the weeds down to make it look like grass. So it was a blank slate and I think that that really excited me. So I did end up buying this house, obviously, and my first big project in the yard was to get rid of all the weeds, which was actually fairly simple, but there was also Bermuda grass in the yard, and so I uh, spent a lot of time trying to get that Bermuda grass out of the yard. And so during this time, my yard, as you can imagine, looked pretty bad. It was basically just dirt. And um, it stayed like that for about a year or more. But even though it looked kind of sketchy, especially to people, you know, you're showing off your new house and they're like, hey, what's going on with your backyard? Um, I was very excited about it because in my mind I had like all of this plan and vision of, of how I wanted to transform the yard. So I, I looked at it with a lot of potential, but I know a lot of people thought um, it didn't look very good. So in this time, while I was kind of getting the yard prepped um, and kind of blank slated, I took the opportunity to kind of sit down and really imagine what I wanted the yard to look like and what I wanted the yard to do and interact and have in it. And for me, this was a lot of fun. And I actually found an old plan of um, me drawing and sketching out what I wanted in the backyard. I ended up changing quite a bit of it. Some of it stays the same, but quite a bit of the plan did change. But this did give me a great starting point because it allowed me to think about what I wanted in my backyard, um, what plants I really loved. You know, just writing a list down of plants that you like um, can be a big help to getting you started. And on that plan that I found, from 2014 of me just sketching out ideas. Um, if you look at it, there is not a single rose on that plan and I have, I don't know, 40 or 50 now. So <laughs> it's definitely moldable and changeable, but a good place to start. So on that plan, I decided to move forward with the things like trees because I knew that the trees are gonna take a while to fill in and that they'll be great for shade but they do take a long time. So that was the first thing I wanted to think about and get in were my big trees, especially here in Phoenix. They make a huge difference in your backyard getting shade in. So I think if you're planning your yard and you're here in Phoenix, the first thing you're gonna wanna execute <laughs> is getting shade trees. So at this point, I really just had some little sticks, stick trees that were little babies and um, a lot of dirt in my backyard so again it, it it didn't look pleasing yet but I knew that that was a really good place to start and they have grown and filled in and I enjoy their shade now 10 years later and kind of using my um, map or plan that I had done for inspiration I picked something small on it 
and that was kind of the first thing I honed into to do in my yard and that was getting some Arizona wildflowers started. I have always loved seeing in the springtime people who let the African daisies and California poppies grow up in their yards or sometimes they even come up kind of in medians. I have always loved seeing those and I knew I wanted to have those in my yard and so that was the first small project, baby step that I took to kind of transform the yard. And so it went from dirt to dirt with seeds in it. And then it has filled in, it, they did spring up and they've come in every year since. I have had to supplement with some extra seeds here and there, but I have kept those Arizona wildflowers going in my yard and I do still love them. So I think getting started with something small and totally manageable is a great way to go and not be too overwhelmed with kind of getting things together in your yard. So I also knew I wanted some pathways or walkways in the yard, so that's probably the next big project that I really took on, was trying to get some pavers in and uh, walkways established. And they were small enough projects that I was able to do them by myself or with the help of friends. And um, yep, slow going, baby step, baby step, but you know, there's no rush and I got them done eventually. So the hardscape was a fairly big project. I think it made things look a little more accessible in my yard, but the big game changer was eventually placing some crushed DG um, decomposed granite all over the yard so that it was no longer dirt, but now rock, the famous Arizona rock. And that made the biggest impact on people who would come and visit the yard. It was like a night and day difference between having dirt and then some DG on it. So. Once that went in, um, I think it was like full steam ahead and definitely things were happening and moving with the yard and changing. And like I said, still just focusing on some small projects on you know my list or plan, just getting in small things here and there. For instance, I knew I wanted the lady banks because I thought the blooms were very pretty and I also really didn't want, um, I've got this CMU block wall behind me I didn't want to paint it or stucco it, so I thought, why not get some vines in and kind of like cover it? And so I originally planted about four lady banks, and today I've got two left, and only one is really covering a wall. So, you know, plans do change, um, <laughs> things change when you get them in the ground, and, and that's when you can really see how they do and how they perform. It will show you kind of when they were planted, what they looked like, and kind of how they evolved. And in fact, some of you may even have found my channel because you were looking for lady banks. Um, I do have a couple of videos showing that lady banks and how stunning it looks blooming. And again, going back to that original plan I had drawn, I knew I had wa I wanted some sort of like planter or something on the side on my side yard. And um, like I said, originally I did not have roses here. Uh, plan for over here in this space and I have a ton of roses sitting over here now so it was definitely a transformation. Um, I had nothing there, it was blank slate and I thought I would want some hibiscus. So I planted four hibiscus over here on the side garden and they all died and at the same time I had taken a chance and planted four roses by one of my gates to get out into the alley and honestly, I thought those were all gonna die, <laughs> but they didn't, they did so well. I guess, well, okay, two did die, but two made it through summer and they, to my surprise, just flourished and they looked so beautiful. And I thought, oh yeah, I probably just didn't water right over the summer. And um, that was true. I needed to water just a little bit more. And they have done so well, these roses. So as the hibiscus died, I just, went back in and planted with roses because I found the roses flourished and the hibiscus did not. And in fact, the roses did so well and I loved the blooms and the fragrance and everything about them. I really went overboard and I put as many as I could and that is how I got my side rose garden. I did go back through the 10 years I've had this yard and I found what I thought were some good representations of how the site garden grew over time 
and so that's basically from like 2014 till now. Um, so I've got the side rose garden and then I've also got kind of a back view showing the back wall um, how that kind of matured over time as well. So yes, the yard has been a very big transformation. I've had a lot of fun doing it over the years. Um, I love being outside and getting kind of close to nature, close to Mother Earth, and just getting um, a plan kind of executed. And um, it's really rewarding to see it kind of fill in. And I love the space in my backyard. I love coming out and having coffee with the roses in the morning. Um, even in the afternoons when it's not 110 out, um, it's nice to sit in the shade of the trees that have filled in and come in over the years. And um, yeah, I love the yard and it's still a work in progress. It's still baby steps by baby steps, getting things, different elements updated and <laughs> worked around and figured out. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I do hope it kind of inspires you to maybe plant some roses or even, you know, sit down and think about what you really want with your backyard and be able to create and transform your own space to live in and um, yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. I really do appreciate it and um, yeah, I'll have more rose videos up for you in the future. Thank you. Bye.